Hi, I'm James, and today on Spooks Tools, I'm restoring an old railway travelling chest. Hi, this is the latest article that my family have dumped on me in order to restore. There's a railway travelling chest that passengers on the railway would pay the guards to contain their articles and luggage inside these secure crates for long journeys. We travel up and down the same route very many times. We have several diagnostic features on this chest that dates it to around 1900. First we have a luggage label here where the customer's name would go. SCOM 4 is misleading because this was a government department and that closed in 1985 but this dates earlier so it was probably requisitioned by a government department. The maker is Mal Cologne, Rue de Poissonnière in Paris. Number 26, the shop still exists. Inside the chest, we have a more detailed maker's mark. Ikeleon, Fabrique d'Articles de Voyage, Grand Specialty pour Voyages Commerce. Mal et Marotte. And there's your telephone number if you want to get one. All the sorts of things he made. On the side of the chest, we have the destination, which is London Bridge, via, I think that is Dieppe which means this was a railway that went to the ferry at Dieppe. The passengers would depart the train, go on the ferry and continue by train to London Bridge, probably from Paris and other destinations around this because the railway is Chemin de Fer de l'Ouest. They closed in 1909, which is why we date this chest to before that, say around 1900. Uh, as this is made of wood, metal, copper, iron, even car, tar and canvas, we have several methods of restoration. The iron, we need to uh, iron drill it. The leather, we just need to use sal soap. We will sand down the wood. For the tar, we will try and clean it with oil and vinegar. And of course, the brass can be polished nicely. Inside, we have a canvas lining, and I'm thinking of taking this off and just putting it in the washing machine like I have attempted with the bottom piece so it came out quite nice and clean and I put some uh, baking soda in there to dry it out because it's full of mould. A bit of hessian damage on the bottom. I think we'll just glue that back together. Okay, that's our work all done with the paper sander bit. <sighs> Looks quite good. It's a pity we don't have a Dremel because we've got to get into the small spaces. I went to pick up a new flappy leather because the old ones are run out and I found a revolutionary new product on the shelves. Small polishing instruments. Not for a Dremel but for a drill. I don't know how long they last but I'll just dip them in some brass here and see how we go. Amazing work. We finish all the abrasion and sanding, looking nice. Now we're going to move on to the panelling of the chest, which is, I believe, creosote painted onto canvas on plywood. So I think the best thing to do is just scrub it with some vinegar and then wash it up liquid in water. So on this part, for example, we want to clean it, but not to erase 
this Paris name here because that makes it unique. If they was writing on here, we might keep that label with this notch and scrape that off. We don't want to get the leather wet. We don't want to get the wood wet. In the meantime, we have a problem. Previous major woodworm invasion, which has totally rotted the wood. We can assume all these are dead because the vibrations from the drill may have dislodged most of them if they were alive. But to prevent further woodworm laying, we're going to put a layer of poison in the wood. We can't afford the stuff in the shop, so we're going to make our own. Using some plants I picked up in the woods. We have Gypsy wart, mare's tail, and hemlock water drop wart. All these are poisonous, and mare's tail specifically was used as an insecticide. So we're going to boil those up. Now, I know it looks all chic and uh, retro like this, but it does suffer from major woodworm damage. So, ideally, I want to fill these holes in so the next owner will know whether he has a new woodworm and treat accordingly. So, I've mixed some wood filler with some coffee and I will spread that on. Right, now the outside is almost complete, we can move on to the interior. It is cloth attached by flour and water, apparently. Initially I washed the cotton lining, but it doesn't come out as I'd liked. It still looks mouldy and awful. So I'm going to take them out and wash them in the washing machine. We need this label off for sentimental reasons. Actually, we're going to cut this out because it's glued. Now, because I'm impulsive and I don't think before doing things, I've completely wet and almost destroyed this sign of provenance here. So, the best thing I can do to rescue it is to put it in a nice little frame and then screw that into the lid. And after washing the line in, I decided not to put them back in because uh, A, I'm lazy, two, they're a bit sort of tattered. Um, there's no guarantee they're going to fit in. I can't afford new ones. And it looks all right like that, doesn't it? Really? They've got a nice motif in French writing there. So we'll just glue that one there. Screw in the plaque. And here are the final results, looking quite good. All blacked up and polished. 
Here's woodworm repair. This I came out particularly good. Perfectly usable modern antique cheek chest worth at least 300 in my opinion. Mon travail est complete. Je te serve une holiday. Vive de la Paris! <coughs> 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 Oh, le bruit, il est trop bon, c'est ça, je le sais.